Only one senior here today, Allen, on this Washington team. So even if they don't make this spirited run and wind up in the NCAAs, they're going to be a factor in the Pac-10 next year. Stanford just with two seniors on their lineup as well. Kickball. So they'll reset the shot clock. Took Washington his, out by four, Jimmy. Took his Pepperdine team to the NIT, and then he took his St. Louis squad to the NCAAs in his first year. Was a winner as a player and continued on as a coach. Actually, might have been the UCLA coach, except he left before Jim Herrick was forced out down there. One of Herrick's top assistants on the last Bruin team to win a championship. Brandon Roy was very quiet for much of the game. He let this game come to him, Jimmy, and now he's stepping up big time. Well, a kid that had 30 against UCLA at UCLA, and this is a guy that can jump twice while all the guys are thinking about jumping. That time it paid off for him. The lead is seven. Four and a half minutes. Looks so risk. Robinson said before the ball game from Washington, this is the game we've been praying for all year. Matt Lodick followed it up with, be careful what you ask for. Here he comes, firing the three. Short again. He's been short on the shot all game long. Robinson hits Simmons, and Simmons gives Jones a shot. Tap back to Pressures the basketball. Now we're down inside of four minutes. Stanford's unbeaten string on the line now. Lottick will fire the three again. Not this time. Childress will have a long rebound. And he'll fire the three. Yes. Josh Childress. It's a six at three and a half. Matt Lodick may want to back off just a little bit with his aggressive shooting that ball. Jensen steps out. Nails a three. The power forward. That's 13 for young Jensen. Childress swings. Inside. Tap no. And it goes to Washington. It was off Harrius. My friend Jimmy Dykes, the underdog is howling in Seattle. If you're a dog fan in Seattle, right now you're hugging folks you don't even know if you're watching this game at home. To beat Stanford, you got to stretch them defensively. Mike Jensen just stretched him. NCAA committee, pay attention. After a few years, the little lady might not be as little as she'd like. If a man knows what's good for him, he'll sympathize with her dietary struggles. Show her you're willing to climb down into that foxhole with her. Tell her straight up, for the next 12 ounces, I'll be counting calories with you. That's sensitivity. That's the light way to live. The high life. What can a drawbridge teach us about brokerage firms? When everything comes together, it can be easier to reach your destination. Wachovia Securities welcomes Prudential Securities and its clients. Talk to us. Together, we can achieve uncommon results. Wachovia Securities. That all you got? Come on, man. Hey, going down. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your deodorant is? Next time, use new Power Stripe from Right Guard. With a stripe of time release odor fighters, no other deodorants got. Nothing looks like it, nothing works like it. Yes. Yeah. 
Right guard, right to the end of the day. Hey! Now at TGI Fridays, two eat for $19.99. Enjoy an appetizer and two entrees from Friday's special menu. Hurry in for two eat for $19.99. Now at TGI Fridays. For some, recovery is a long road. For men, they reach for Revitalizing Lotion Q10. Because Q10 replenishes skin to feel healthy, firm, and fit. Especially when you don't. Nivea for men. More evolved skin care. Starting March 19th. Four people were shot to death. A special four-part series event. Stephen Weber is the DA. Premieres ABC Friday, March 19th. The Huskies have defeated a number one ranked team only once in 27 tries. You go back to February 22nd, 1979. Lorenzo Romar was a reserve guard on Marv Harshman's team. And that day it was against one of the great UCLA teams coached by John Wooden. Romar with 10 points, six assists, no turnovers in 25 minutes against the top ranked Bruins. And now could history repeat here against Stanford? Marv Harshman, who coached, well, 14 years is in attendance. And Marv is up there behind the baseline in his familiar seat. What a great job he did out here with the Washington Huskies. And now Stanford picks up the basketball in the backcourt. They're all over Conroy. They've got three minutes to work with here. The miracle workers from Stanford trying to do it one more time. They've done it to Arizona, Washington State. Now they're up against it again. Boy, and don't think Lorenzo Romar didn't talk about that game in the locker room prior to this one. When you're 16 and 10 and you're desperate, fighting for your NCAA life, you bring out every story you can in the book. Both teams huddled up now. Now, Romar, he has been a realist with regards to Washington making the NCAA tournament. We will have done everything we can if we beat Stanford. But that high RPI works against him. He knows that. Done well on the road now. They've won 11 of the last 13. And one of the losses, one of the two losses, was a quality game at North Carolina State. How you finish is important. We just need to keep winning. That's all we can do. They would go from here. They would go down to the Pac-10 tournament next weekend at the Staples. And now my coach, question to you, Jimmy, is he indeed the Pac-10 coach of the year with this brilliant turnaround? Well, I think he'd be the uh, Pac-10 coach of the second half of the year, but <laughs> unfortunately, he's against the guy that might be the national coach of the year in Mike Montgomery. You know, that's the truth. Now we're inside of three. Huskies. Up by nine. Simmons has saved him with his shooting. Roy has been very aggressive in the second half. He penetrates inside, rises up short. Battle for the ball. They want to battle each other. Finally, it's Hernandez. Coming across the timeline on Robinson's got Childress. Childress fires three. Yes! Here they come again, the miracle workers. I think you stay with Childress and Hernandez down the stretch. He can get little touches when he's in, that's fine. Plenty of time. Knocked away from Robinson. Ball on the floor. Childress can't get it. Still loose. Harrius reaches for it. And it's Washington basketball. Terrific job by Childress to run wide in transition. Almost stepped out of bounds. That's how you teach it. Terrific rotation on the basketball. We talked about the desperate energy that the Washington's played with. Chris Hernandez starting to match it right now. 17 fouls apiece here at the two-minute mark. Roy got it inside, picked up Jones, and it is rejected. And the foul is called on Harrius. Conroy brings the Huskies together for a huddle in the lane. Omar knows how important this is now with one of his best athletes, Bobby Jones, out of Compton, California. Went to Long Beach Poly High School. He played with Chandler, the youngster who was drafted in the first round by the Chicago Bulls. But after he left, Jones and his high school team won a state championship. And Jones was Romar's first recruit up here in Seattle. Childress picking it up. A go-to guy for Stanford. When I was uh, never on an undefeated team when I played at Arkansas, but I was on a team that knocked off a 16-0 North Carolina team. It's amazing how much energy and passion you have in a ball game like this. No Childress. one for Washington's tired. Long three, and there he is 
again. Robinson. Jensen to run some time. Down to 145. Now the Huskies need to be smart. Hernandez battling Robinson fouled him. Everything right now is working Washington for Montgomery wants to briefly talk about it over here. Cardinal benches up. Now let's take you back to the start of the day. I think Montgomery knew just how tough this was going to be. Romar coming over with a big smile. Early on, it was a battle with the referees. And then upset with his players at times here today. It is so hard. No team in Pac-10 history since they expanded the conference has been able to go 18-0. And, and they were they were sitting on that bubble here today. And uh, one final reminder now that tomorrow at 9.30, great NBA, Mavericks, Rockets. That'll be followed by the Nets and the Lakers here on ABC. Then tomorrow night at 4.30 Pacific time on ESPN, you'll see Minnesota hosting the red-hot Boston Celtics. Can the Celtics keep it going? They've won four in a row. Even with a loss today, I don't think there's any way you can jerk a number one seed from the hands of Stanford. I oh, absolutely agree. Robinson. What they have really missed, Justin Davis in this ball game. He had 17 and 13 in the first matchup. Solid points. I mean, he's over there in uniform. He worked yesterday in practice. I watched him. They're hopeful to get him back in the tournament. With the Cardinal coming back now. Down seven a minute and a half. Hernandez. Childress. Hernandez will fire a deep three. No. And it's Cardinal ball 123. Well, if there's a team in the country that can come back from this deficit, you're looking at him. You're looking at him. One of the miracle workers lost it this time. Out of bounds. It has been a struggle, and it began Thursday night. There was snow, tough trip out of that airport. They had to wait four or five hours. They didn't get into Seattle till 2 o'clock. They had a late start to their practice yesterday. They called off the morning shoot-around. You could understand if this is a tired basketball team being emotionally drained. But many experts have said that it might help Stanford and the NCAAs if they would lose one game before the season ends. Now, Montgomery and the players are buying none of that. But you as armchair experts and us up here, we tend to agree with that. That takes a little bit of pressure off the team, doesn't it, Jimmy? Well, if you're a Stanford fan, that's exactly what you're buying into right now. Back home in Palo Alto. And I'll tell you what, this club has all the makings to still go deep in March. They've got the depth. They've got the uh, shooters. Lodic has been off today. They've got the size, and they can play a style that wins on a neutral floor. And with Davis back, I think they can win the whole thing. Yep. This is far from a neutral floor today, Parker. <laughs> I mean, the doghouse is howling. Arias comes open at the free throw line. Goes after the miss. Puts it back up. No. Seconds ticking away. Now down to 107. Hernandez and... Lodic jumped in and a foul is called. And Lodic fouls out. Well, we go back to February 7th against Arizona. The running 35 footer by Nick Robinson. And the unbeaten season is saved. Then, Thursday night, ball on the floor into Robinson hands. Back down to Lodic. Grip it and rip it. And they stay unbeaten, but now this one will be even tougher. Like found out in the run of 11, indicating just how tired he has been here today. Many of his shots were short. They may have used up their allotment of good, clean living coupons for the year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. One of the great surges, though, going down here in Seattle by the Washington Huskies. 
This is a team that is going to make the committee think. Final minute, Childress with an offensive rebound. Nice pass to Robinson. Now 55.8 and timeout. I tell you the other thing that will make folks think if you're an Arizona fan right now, I know what RPI and strength of schedule SOS means, but CSI Common Sense Index is also going to show Washington beat Arizona twice head to head. That has to speak volumes. As a football guy, Jimmy, I find a lot of similarity between the RPI and the BCS. BCS. <laughs> And a lot of those fellows that they say have got a pretty good RPI would come out here to Seattle, and I'm telling you right now, they'd be underdogs. Believe it. Those guys who make numbers, you ought to listen to them, too. They know where talent is. That's their business. A game that this Washington campus has been starved for for about three weeks now. Again, Nate Robinson said, I've been praying for this opportunity for the last two or three weeks. I talked to him before the ball game. He said, I got a strong hunch. My prayer is about to get answered. This could be one of the big upsets of the season here in Washington. And remember, this team, this Husky team, started out 0 and 5. They have won 11 of their last 12 Pac-10 games. Unbelievable how they have come down the stretch. And this is what you want to encourage. This is what you want. The Nielsen sets turned on to the upper northwest. You want Seattle, Chicago, so happy to have DePaul in. It would light up the television sets in Seattle if the Huskies make it. Another set of numbers that are worth thinking about. Don't think for a second that might not factor in. the free throw Jimmy and now we are closing in inside of a minute it's a 10 Stanford will look long ball if they can get it if not glide for the two and Robinson does giving him a life now Robinson will come up to shoot you know what though I think as competitive as Nate Robinson is he's a type of kid as soon as he got fouled his first thought Brent was you just fouled the wrong dude yep. that's a confident competitive guy right there you know, Jimmy, his high school, Rainier Beach tonight, going for three state championships in a row over the uh, Tacoma Dome. So that'll be an interesting story. I believe they play O'Day High School. Both those teams, I think, won their semifinal games yesterday. And there's Pops. Former great running back here at Washington. And the legendary coach, Marv Harshman, in the stands. A little frosting now. The upset is at hand. 43 seconds. Stanford looking for another miracle run. It'll go in for Hernandez. He got it quickly. And now they foul. There he is. So put Roy on that free throw line. And that will be the strategy now, sitting on an eight. They can still do it, believe me. Anybody who's watched this team knows full well Lomar and his staff over there. They certainly know it. Ken Bone, Cameron Dollar, and Russ Shaney, the assistants. Got to say about Cameron Dollar, first time I had a chance to watch the former great UCLA guard run a practice yesterday. Someday Cameron Dollar is going to be a head coach, folks. You pay attention to that young man. He knew exactly what he was doing out there yesterday, Jimmy. He did a great job of breaking Stanford down in practice. Got him down to a team, didn't he? He sure did. Lorenzo doesn't want to lose that guy anytime soon. Bad pass. It's turned over. Big mistake with 33 seconds to go in the lead at nine. Wow. Well, they'll put the point guard on the line. You know what, Stanford did a better job in the second half of taking care of the basketball, but again, way too many turnovers on the road when you know you're going to get the other team's best shot. Washington has matched Stanford's comeback energy and then took it to another level himself. So the second player fouls out. Lodick is joined by Robinson. Well, one thing you can say about Montgomery and Stanford from interviewing the youngsters. It is such a class operation. But it is so tough, 
even for a great team, to go unbeaten throughout an entire season. And what this loss will, uh, they will really stick in the gut of Stanford. I know they'll be 26 and one, but they'll hate it. And end is missing. Childress comes back. Now Grunfeld's turn. Arias finally. 18 ticks of the clock left. 71-62 off the steal. No. Conroy coming up to the free throw line now. 13 seconds to go. And now, let's take a look at our key moment, Jimmy. Presented by Cialis. They were struggling early in the second half. And uh, Stanford allowed Trey Simmons to catch and shoot. Scouting report tells you he's a 6'5 marksman. Make you put it on the floor, and that was a real key in this ball game. And I can tell you this, all heck is getting ready to break loose in the heck head. I'm happy we're up a little yeah. bit high here. There'll be some scene here. That was the halftime score, then a spirited Stanford rally brought them right back in it. And uh, <laughs> Jones has got his, he wants to record the moment, folks. Now that's a veteran move right there out of a sophomore, huh? Allen leaving the floor for the last time, probably. He's the only senior on this Husky team. Five Washington players in double figures here today. And, and it is time, Jimmy, for the underdog to start howling. Down to 10 seconds now. The three off iron. Robinson running out. Now he'll bring seconds off. He's beyond the free throw line. Stanford out of sync all day, and Washington had a whole lot to do with it. There's a party going on right here. And all those experts back on the East Coast who said there's no way Washington can make it. I mean, that RPI is so bad. I mean, what are you people doing? Uh, give me a break. This team deserves keen consideration for one of the 65 spots. They are about to hand Stanford its first defeat of the season. They are about to make Stanford the top-ranked team in the nation. 26 and 1. They have beaten Arizona twice. They went to North Carolina State late and played the Wolfpack right down to the wire before losing. This team is a quality team deserving of an NCAA tournament bid. Washington celebrates its upset of the number one team in the nation. A magical run by Stanford. Just ran into a purple wall. Terrific effort by the Huskies. And the underdog is Howland in the Northwest. Once again, the final score, 75-62. ABC Sports Online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Join ABC tonight at 8 o'clock for the ABC Saturday Movie of the Week. Frequency. For Jimmy Dykes and the rest of our ABC crew, I'm Brett Musburger saying so long from Seattle. This is ABC Sports Championship Television. What it comes down to is faith. To err is human, but getting even, that's divine. February. These stories exclusively on Como 4 News. One of baseball's most elusive superstars opened up. I want to become a perfect person. A community divided. The gay pastor standing trial for telling the truth. That was painful. And true crime writer Ann Rule. For the first time, the murders that haunt her. And I don't think I've ever written one more nightmarish than that one. Exclusive. When people have something to say, they say it to Como 4 News. First for local news. Next week. Hello. Wave. Pyramid contestants work hard for the money. When a parent gives them far too many things, the kid is spoiled. Because when it's a labor of love, the price of something is the cost. Winning never sounded so sweet. Woo! Woo! 
be Sirens. Will their hard work pay off in the winner's circle? Because a rich guy needs 18 rooms. Why you would buy a big house? Why um, you would buy a mansion? Find out on Pyramid. Weekdays at 4.30 on Como 4. And good evening, I'm Molly Shen. And I'm Kevin Reese, heart pumping, hair raising, and on the edge of your seat. You saw it here live, and the Huskies did it. Como Force Frank Chaponi is here with us now. What a game. And Frank, this Certainly has got to be one of the biggest upsets in school history. I know. It's got to be. It's been a long time since we've had this much excitement about a game, and then to pull it off, it absolutely has to be. A dream come true for the dogs. Only once in their history have the Huskies beaten the number one team in the country. That was back in 1979. That Husky team had a backup guard named Lorenzo Romar. They call him Coach Romar now. He was out passing donuts around to the students early this morning. Romar had the donuts. Mike Jensen was doing the dunking. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. The Huskies, including Mike Jensen, had a great first half. Nate Robinson with a long three-pointer. The Dogs had a 10-point lead at the break, and oh, they were jumping for joy at the joint. But Stanford's not the number one team in 26 and 0 for nothing. They scored the, the first nine points of the second half, and that lead was gone, gone, gone. But then Trey Simmons got hot. He hit a three from the corner. He hit a three from the wing, and then. Just for good measure, uh, he hit it from just about the same spot. The lead was 10 again for the Huskies. And then Mike Jensen, who you saw dunking earlier, steps out and hits another three. The Huskies do it. They knock off number one and previously unbeaten Stanford by the final of 75 to 62. And after it was all over, yeah, the crowd went nuts and stormed the court. And you can't blame them because like you said, one of the biggest upsets of all time for the Huskies. You have to. You have to get them into the tournament now, right? So what a way to finish the season. The Pac-10 tournament is next. And will they get that invite to the NCAA tournament? Oh. I think this says yes. Yeah, we listened to Brent Musburger again and again and again. He said yes, they need to get that invite. They it's deserve hard. it. I don't see how you keep those guys out. They are yeah. hot. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Frank. Mm -hmm. Well, as Frank just showed us, the fans stormed the court at the end of the game. Some of them have to be coming out of Heckhead Pavilion now. That's where Como Force Joe Furia is live with all the Husky fans. Joe? Well, you're exactly right, Molly. The party is spilling out of Heck Ed and out onto the UW campus right now. As you take a look behind me, you can see many of the 10,000 fans who were just inside watching one heck of a basketball game as the dogs upset top-ranked Stanford are now coming out, making their way back to the cars. In fact, we've even see, seen some Stanford fans walking over this way. Uh, there were quite a few out here at the game. We've seen some long faces, though, uh, from them, but a lot of happy faces. Most of the fans out here, the dog fans, will be talking to some of them and bringing you their reaction, not only to this incredible 13-point win over the number one team in the nation, the unbeaten, formerly unbeaten Stanford Cardinal today, but also their thoughts now on the NCAA tournament and what this may mean for the Huskies. So we'll be back with that a little bit later on in the newscast. Molly, Kevin? All right, thank you, Joe. We'll let you talk to some fans and we'll check back.